Welcome to Mornstead, a prominent region within the vast and sprawling world of Lords of the Fallen. In today's extended gameplay walkthrough, we're sharing an exclusive look at just some of the diverse and harrowing areas you'll journey through in your epic quest to overthrow a deer, the Demon God. This is Skyrest Bridge. It is guarded by Pieta, she of the Blessed Renewal, one of the game's early boss encounters. We must triumph against her in order to proceed with our holy charge to restore radiance to the six beacons of the Sentinels and thwart Adir's uprising. Oh, holy Aureus. By your radiance, grant me the strength to continue to endure these dark days, to lay bare the path to salvation. And yet you now appear before me, a stranger, a betrayal made flesh, and one I cannot brook. Melee, magic, and ranged abilities are seamlessly interwoven. Alongside standard attacks, you can choose between catalysts, bows, crossbows, or throwables, mapping up to four additional magic or ranged skills to your controller for immediate access. This rapidly speeds up combat and reduces the need to swap between options. As with many of the imposing bosses you'll encounter, Pieta has two very distinct stages. Death is not necessarily the end in Lords of the Fallen. When slain in Axiom, the realm of the living, you'll resurrect in Umbral, the realm of the dead. We now have one final chance to survive. Though few and far between, these flowers denote special patches of ground upon which we can spawn a resting point, known as a vestige seedling. These come at a significant resource cost, however, and we can only spawn one at a time. The realms of Axiom and Umbral exist in parallel. Each world features its own unique pathways, enemies, characters, and, of course, treasures. We can now use this crafted vestige to return to Axiom. We can peer into the secondary realm at any time by raising the Umbral Lamp. Though be advised, this also renders you vulnerable to its inhabitants. We will now use the lamp to cross over to Umbral, though doing so will consume one of our two lives, and it isn't so easy to return to the world of the living.
Many enemies require a different approach to combat. This mendacious visage, for example, is only vulnerable when attacked from the back or when it reveals its true form. You'll also come across permanent vestiges on your travels. As well as using these to return to Axiom, you can also level up your stats at these locations. Three schools of sorcery can be mastered. Rulgar, Radiant, and Umbral, each specializing in a different area of the arcane and requiring a different catalyst to cast. Our current build is adept in Rugar, characterized by devastating pyromantic attacks. An age-old borough built into the very cliff face, Pilgrim's Perch typifies the verticality of Moonstead. There are myriad pathways stretching both above and below with hidden areas, treasures and NPCs all awaiting discovery. As a lamp bearer, all players are equipped with a devastating ability, the Soul Flay. By using one of a limited number of soul charges, we are able to extract the very soul of an enemy, ready to inflict significant damage.
The Soul Flay ability can also be used to manipulate the very environment when in Umbral. We now find ourselves in Lower Kalrath, an ever-burning district renowned for its displays of barbarity. We're now going to invite a second player to join us on our journey. This is easily achieved at any of the vestiges. You can choose to fight alongside a friend or a randomly selected player. Either way, your co-op companion will remain at your side for as long as you or they choose. As a Radiant Sorcerer, our ally is able to buff either character with various enhancements. It appears our way is blocked by an umbral entity. We will need to track its tendrils in order to locate and expel the source of its power.
Finally, it's time to face off against the colossal spurned progeny, Scourge of Calrath. The lands of Mornstead await you. Pre-order Lords of the Fallen now and prepare to unleash the darkness on Friday the 13th of October. <laughs>